Hello, and welcome to Precon Decon, the video series where I deconstruct the pre-constructed decks of Magic the Gathering's history. In this video, we are continuing our look at Time Spiral, and we're going to look at the uh, mono-white deck, Hope's Crusaders. Uh, let's get into that. So, deck list here, 29 creatures, which is huge, uh, 4 sorceries, 3 artifacts, 1 instant, 20 through land, mana curve off to the side there, let's start looking at the creatures. So, Hope's Crusaders. This is basically um, Knight Tribal. Um, it's it's mostly Knight Tribal. There's a few um, creatures in here that aren't Knights, but for the most part, it is a bunch of White Knights, which is which is cool. Um, you know, I, I normally don't get excited too much about White Weenie decks, um, but the, these are pretty. I like Knights. Knights are a cool tribe. Um, so yeah, this this one I'm more I'm more positively uh, inclined towards. Let's say. Uh, so one of the res of the deck is Pentarch Paladin. Uh, so two colors, triple white for a three three. Um, absolute superstar, I think. Great rare to have in this deck. Um, so it has flanking. So flanking is back in time spiral block. And flanking is um, basically when every creature without flanking blocks a creature with flanking. Uh, the blocking creature gets minus one, minus one to the end of turn, which is, it's kind of like reverse Bushido, I suppose, in a way. Um, and also acts as like kind of a removal ability. Because, um, you know, he just he just can't be blocked by X, well, I mean, he can be blocked by X ones, but they'll just immediately die. Um, he'll still count as being blocked and won't do damage. But um, yeah, just the fact, you know, you've got to think about how you block with these, uh, block against these creatures with flanking. It's really fun. Not, I mean, not for your opponent, for you, it's fun. Um, so when Pentarch Paladin comes into play, you choose a colour, and you can pay two white and tap to destroy a permanent of the chosen colour. So really good ability. Um, yeah, I love this, that you can choose the colour. So it's, like, basically always useful against what you're playing. You know, I'm never, um, I'm never a fan of uh, uh, cards that, like, are, you know, have, like, the choice locked. You know, if this was just, like, um, you know, he, you know, it destroys just like red permanence or just black permanence or something. Um, it'd be a whole lot less useful, but the fact you can choose color makes it a lot more useful um, and flexible, I think, and more enjoyable to play. Um, yeah, it doesn't make it a sideboard choice, essentially. Uh, so yeah, really like Pentarch Paladin. Good rare to have. Uh, so you have two Cavalry Masters, uh, four mana for a 3-3 three, three with flanking. Um, other creatures you control with flanking have flanking. So you give all your flanking creatures basically double flanking, which is <laughs> which is really interesting. And, you know, the first time you read that line of text, it just feels, you know, you make, your head will make internet dial-up noises. They're just like, what? <laughs> My creatures with flanking get flanking. But they already have flanking. So I'm really glad they actually put the um, reminder text in this case that uh, says, like, yep, flanking can stack. You can have multiple instances of flanking. Um, yeah. Yeah, I really like Cavalry Master um, as a as a flanking matters, uh, which is a card you never thought you'd never see, but Time Spiral uh, definitely knocks it out of the park with weird designs. Anyway, so yeah, Cavalry Master is really good. Pretty much every creature in this deck has flanking, um, so it benefits pretty much all of them. Uh, three Benelish Cavaliers, uh, Cavaliers Cavalry. Um, so uh, one card's one white, two two with flanking. Um, yep. So basically a bear with upside, which is fine. We're getting into that period now where white and green are, are starting to get like two twos for two with with abilities. Um, because you know, obviously they're the best colors at having you know small creatures. Um, so yeah, Benish Cavalry is a is a perfectly good two drop for this deck. Uh, two Outrider end course so the core back, which is great. Uh, so two cards and one white for a two-two with flanking, and it has like the old core ability of being able to shuffle damage that's been dealt to it to another creature you control, which is um, you know that's pretty fun. Uh, there's a few ways in this deck that can kind of interact and keep it alive. Uh, so yeah, yeah, good. Another good card to have there. Um, a single Gust Cloak Cavalier. Um, so three colors and two white for a two-two with flanking. Uh, whenever Gust Cloak Cavalier attacks, you can tap target creature, and whenever Gust Cloak Cavalier becomes blocked, uh, you can untap it, remove it from combat. So, uh, if you have been watching my videos for a long time, firstly, bless you. Um, but uh, back in Onslaught, there's a deck called Celestial Assault, which was a white-blue deck, and it had all these Gust Cloak creatures in there. And they all have this ability where if, if they, when they attack... Um, and they become blocked, you can untap them, remove them from combat, which is like a really good ability. But they were all quite boring in their design. In fact, they, you know, they didn't have keywords as such. They um, 
didn't have like uh, attack triggers. Whereas Gus Cloak Cavalier is the Gus Cloak creature I always wanted. Um, in the fact, so it has um an effect when it attacks. So it can tap a creature. Um, yeah, you know, if it gets blocked, it um obviously has the flanking ability, so it could potentially kill an X one or something. Um, but if you still don't like how the block is turning out, you can just untap it, remove from combat. But like it's already had its effect to. Uh, potentially weaken something and also tap a creature down. So yeah, really, really good, really good use of the Gust Cloak ability with these uh, these other mechanics. Yeah, just a shame it's very expensive at five mana, but it is. You know, I think when it got if it gets going, it'd be hard to deal with. Um, we have three Knight of the Holy Nimbus. Uh, so two white, two two. Uh, with flanking. Um, if it would be destroyed, it automatically regenerates. Um, and your opponent has to pay two to basically turn off its automatic regeneration. Uh, which is, you know, normally uh, in the past I've gone against these cards of being like, oh, you know, sometimes your card doesn't work how you want it to do because your opponent can pay mana. This, In this case, I think this is fine because um, it's such a strong ability um, that, like, and also being, like, quite efficiently costed, like, two white mana for a 2-2 with flanking. Um, yo, know, it's basically fine, uh, honestly. And, uh, yeah. I think I think it's just a, it's just a fine card. Also, no, it's a rebel. Uh, rebels are back in this block as well. Um, there is a deck later on. I think in future sight where basically all the rebels get back together for a big big party. So yeah, that'll be fun. Have a have a Macadian masks vibes again. Uh, two Zalfirin commanders. Uh, so two cards, one white for a two two with flanking. Um, so this is one of the time shifted cards. So it's originally from, I think, Mirage or Visions, and it got um, time-shifted, essentially, into Time Spiral, which is why it has a little purple um, expansion symbol, um, which, funnily, it makes it modern legal, which is really fun. Um, so you could play modern and have Zalfirin Commander. It's a card that's, like, <laughs> 25 years old, uh, which I think is just really fun. Um, so, yeah, so 2-2 two, two with flanking, and it has this kind of, like, uh, expensive tribal effect. One colorless and double white to give a knight plus one plus one to end a turn. It, it's okay. It's okay. Um, and then moving on to the non-knights. Uh, so we have a single Celestial Crusader, uh, four mana for a 2-2, two, two, um, with flying, flash, and split second. So there's a lot going on there. So you can play this at instant speed, and no one can do anything about it. It can't be counted, nothing. It just, it comes down, and it's just there. Uh, split second is like a really like powerful ability, I think. Um, just the fact you just can't react to it in any way. Um, very strong. Um, but yes, 2-2 two, two flyer and gives all white creatures plus one plus one. So that does include opponents' white creatures as well. But you know, you're playing mono white. You're probably going to be getting more out of this than, than your opponent. Uh, so yeah, yeah, potentially also a really good combat trick because it's essentially giving all your creatures plus one plus one for four mana instant speed. So yeah, good card. Um, single cloud cra cloud chaser kestrel, uh, one colors and two white for a two two fly. When it comes into play, you destroy an enchantment and you pay one white to make a permanent white until end of turn. Um, yeah, this um, potentially very mean combination with the pentarch paladin. Um, if you play pentarch paladin, choose white. You could use Cloud Chaser, Cloud Chaser Kestrel, that is hard to say, um, to turn opponents' lands into white permanents, and then Pentarch Paladin starts destroying lands. I mean, if you if you wanted to, I'm not saying do it, I'm just saying you could do it, but but don't do it. But, you know, do it if you have to. But don't do it, but if you have to. Um, so yeah, pretty good, like, just a little utility creature, honestly. Um, two Davenant healers, uh, so one colors, two white for a one two, um, and it's basically a combination of crossbow infantry. Oh, God, I can't talk today. Crossbow infantry and Samite healer. Um, it either taps to do one damage to attacking or blocking creature, or taps to prevent damage to a creature or player. Um, yep, yeah, just fine, just a fine card. I think it's okay. Uh, two errant doomsayers. Uh, one colors and one white for a one one. Tap to tap target creature with power with ugh, with toughness two or less. Um, Master Decoy, this is not. Um, yeah, this is this is a signif this is significantly worse than Master Decoy, in my opinion. Um, the fact it's limited in what it can tap down, like toughness two or less, typically are things you don't really care about tapping down. Um, yeah, it's free to do, I suppose, but um, yeah, just just worse than Master Decoy and uh, you know cards cards like that. So um, you know, a rare miss in in the Time Spiral card pool, I think. 
Um, and then two Phorizian Interceptors. Uh, so four mana for a 0-5 with Flash and Defender, and it can block an additional creature. Um, kind of expensive, honestly, for a 0-5 Defender that can just block two creatures. I suppose it has Flash, but... Um, yeah, it's uh, that's a, it's a little again like the Errant Doom says that's a little underwhelming I think. Um and then we have a single Acacian Crier, uh two cards more might for a 1/1. One, one. Um oh so spell shapers are back in time spiral as well. Uh so one card's one white, tap discard a card, uh put two 1/1 one, one white citizen creature tokens into play. So, you know, this is a, you know, fine fine effect to have I suppose. Um basically does raise the alarm. Um, well, it's worse than raise the alarm because there's fewer citizen interactions than soldier interactions. Um, but yeah, it's fine. Just gets extra tokens down on the field. You know, if you've got Celestial Crusader, they're coming down as two twos. Um, yeah, I think it's okay. I think it's okay. Uh, three Acacian Javelineers. Uh, so one white mana for a 1-1. One, one. It's a white ping creature, which is very weird. Uh, so it comes in play with a Javelin counter on it, and you, you can tap, remove a Javelin counter, it does one damage to any target. Um, so yeah, it's a very, it's a very cheap one-use prodigal sorcerer, basically. Uh, but yeah, and it's also a way for white to have, um, indirect damage without having to care about certain timings, like, uh, attacking or blocking or whatever. Yeah, I think it's perfectly fine, like one drop in this deck. Uh, a single Ivory Giant, uh, five colours and two white for a 3-4. Uh, when it ends the battlefield, tap all non-white creatures and you can suspend it. We're going to talk a lot more about suspend in the next deck we're going to look at. Um, but suspend basically means you can pay the suspend cost. It goes goes into exile with a certain number of time counters on it. Every upkeep you remove a time counter. When the last time counter comes off, comes into play. Um, so yeah. That's, um, I think it's fine. Also, like, yeah, it's a really strong effect as well. You can come in and potentially tap down your opponent's whole board and then just, you know, swing, swing for gain. So, yeah, yeah, quite like Ivory Giant. Obviously, stats aren't super impressive being seven mana for a three, four. But the fact it's got suspend means you can cast it. You effectively cast it earlier um, and just have to wait for it. And then it's like this kind of ticking time bomb waiting to go off. Uh, Divine Congregation, uh, four mana, you gain two life for every creature a, a target player controls, and it's another one you can suspend. Um, this one I don't think you get too much benefit out of suspending, I think it's better just to hold on to it and just cast it at the you know, at a time where it's you know works the best, I think. Um, the fact that you can choose any player is okay. Uh, normally you're going to choose yourself because you've got a load of creatures, but there is a chance you know the board position is your opponent has more creatures and you know, this could help. Um, a single fortify. This is uh, this is a great card actually. Um, so it's technically better. It's technically better than trumpet blast, which is like kind of a red version of this, but only does um, only does power. Uh, so two colors and one white to give all your creatures either plus two plus naught or plus naught plus two until end turn. So really good flexible um, card there. Yeah, really. Yeah, fortify is pretty pretty solid card. Uh, and then three Gaze of Justice, uh, one white mana. Uh, as an additional cost to cast it, you have to tap three untapped white creatures you control, but you get to exile something. Um, and you can flash it back as well um, for five and a white. So uh, that flashback cost is very high. Obviously, you, you still have to like tap the um, the white creatures as well and its sorcery speed. Um, but, you know, being able to exile something for, for one white mana is I think it's always worth considering I say you've got so many creatures in the deck anyway but tapping three white creatures is is not going to be a difficult yeah requirement to hit I think uh so yeah I think pretty 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 okay pretty okay as a removal spell uh two brass now I have no idea where this in this this is in the deck um it doesn't it doesn't like go at all um so just one mana for a one one artifact creature it has flying doesn't untap during your untap step and you have to pay one to untap it during your upkeep um yeah just just a bad card i I don't know why it's in here um yeah this is <laughs> if we're comparing cards at the time this is worse than suntail Hawk, which was just one white mana for a one one flyer and it doesn't have all these um all these other um, drawbacks of having to pay to untap it. So yeah, just just not a great card to include in my opinion. So the other rare of the deck is Sarpedian Empires Volume 7. Uh, so three mana artifact, when it comes into play you choose either White Citizen, Blue Camarid, Black Thrall, Red Goblin, or Green Sapling, and you can pay three and tap to put a 1-1 one, one creature token of the chosen colour and type into play. So obviously with this you really want to go most of the time with Citizens. Um, but you know, I could I could see there. This is honestly like a really fun artifact. Like, um, I don't think anyone really cares about blue camarids or black thralls. But the um, 
the fact it can make red goblin it can make goblin tokens or sapling tokens matters a lot to other decks as well um but yeah this is i think this is a fine rare to have just another way of um making kind of tokens um that benefit from your various um various boosts like this i say the celestial crusader or other cards that care about going wide and then two thunder totems uh three mana artifact get taps to give you white mana or you can spend one colors and two white to turn it into a two two white spirit artifact creature with flying and first strike to under turn so it just turns into a fairly decently fairly decently good creature in the air as well so yeah and it's fine as a as a mana rock it's pretty good so what could have been? Um, so I do think the card selection in this deck is pretty good. I think it's basically using the the best white cards in Time Spiral, um, with some exceptions. I I don't think the Forizian Interceptor or the um, Doomsayers are that great, and I have no idea why Brass Nat's in here. Um, so these are some potentials that could have gone in here. Um, so at the top, just some auras I thought would help. You know, like your creatures out. Uh, so Griffin Guide. Uh, gives plus two plus two and flying and then when the enchanted creature dies you get a um two two uh griffin token which is pretty good three mana i think that's pretty solid uh pentarch ward is when it comes into play you choose a color and the enchanted creature has protection from the color and you also draw a card so again like you're pretty good pretty good guard to put down and you know essentially you have something that has protection for your opponent's deck essentially uh spirit loop is um uh, essentially gives lifelink it's not exactly lifelink it's i won't go into it but it 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 basically gives lifelink and then if spirit loop would be destroyed it just goes back into your hand so you can just kind of keep putting it down on something that's kind of expendable attack with it or block with it gain the life even if it dies you're going to keep the spirit loop so yeah and that's fine um Moorish Cavalry, I think, could have been fine in here as a as another time shifted card. So it's two cards and two white for a three three knight with trample, which I think is pretty interesting. Um, that could have been a fun time shifted card to put in here. I think so rare to see a white creature with trample. And Valor, Valor, I think would have been fun in here as well. So four mana, uh, first strike. But if it's in your graveyard and you have a planes, um, or your creatures have first strike, talked a lot about Valor when I was looking at um, uh, Odyssey block, and I just think it's just really solid. Uh, incarnation to have you've got a few ways of discarding cards i think in this deck um acacian cry is the one that stands out i suppose but i mean you can always just play him and like play very aggressively with valor get it killed and then it's in your graveyard and it's making all your other creatures much better so yeah i think that could have been a fun uh fun alternative card to put in here um couldn't think of another good rare because i think um uh, pent up paladin is great and sarpadian empires is is fine but i couldn't th i couldn't find a white card that i thought was better than it so uh yeah rare rare time that i don't suggest an alternative rare uh so in summary i think uh this one's actually yeah it's pretty solid it's like uh white weenies um the, i say the card selection is pretty good um very straightforward to play just play a bunch of white knights and just swing and yeah win combat um yeah i think it's i think it's pretty good pretty straightforward um yeah uh, I think I had it, uh, played it a few times before I got out of the box, and I remember having an okay time with it. But um, yeah, overall, good, a, a good deck. But um, that's just my opinion of it after looking at the, the deck list. What were your thoughts? Did you have this deck? Um, you know, If you have any thoughts or opinions uh, or stories about this deck, please put a comment below. I love reading those. Um, but I'm going to be back next time to look at another Time Spiral pre-constructed deck. But until then, thank you for watching and listening, and have a great day.